Very good morning, Dr. Patok. Very welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Very good morning and good yes. to see you after a long, long time. I think we once we interacted na, during our uh, yes, 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 yes. Yes. discussion. Yes, 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 yes. Sure. Okay, so uh, let's take the uh, start of the formal proceedings. At the very outset, let me extend a very good morning to all of our virtual as well as physical participants. And I'm very happy that we saw the Library Network on the occasion of paying its homage at the dawn of 132nd birth anniversary of Padma Sri Dr. S. R. Anganathan Ayar, who is supposed to be, no doubt, father of Indian Library and Human Science. And 9th August, Sometimes it is called 12th August because one is official, another one is birth certificate. So both the days have been observed as his birthday. And long back, it has been declared as Indian National Librarian's Day. And throughout India and many of the neighboring country, particularly Asian country, observed this uh, birthday anniversary of Indian LIS icon to commemorate his contribution in the land of library and human science, not only India, not only Asia, but also throughout the globe. And to commemorate as well as to excel the research and academic skill development of different academics, not only from Vishwabharati, but also from Bengal, but also from India, but also from whole globe. Since it's opened through Zoom and through website, it is available in the public domain. So there are many participants who are adjoining with us virtually to extend their modal support, professional support, and to encourage us to have this kind of uh, program repeatedly. And every month we are having this kind of program with the generous support from Indian LIS Galaxy. And today I'm happy that we have with us within a, just a call, just a call, and it was on Friday, when Dr. Parthok was traveling towards his office, and when I got him after a while, after listening these things, he has no thinking means what he has Monday task on his office or whatever it is. And this is Dr. Parthok, his generosity to accept my invitation and immediately without thinking twice, he agreed that Nimai sir, I will be there to address your gatherings as, and I would like to be the part of paying humble honor to our Indian allies father, that is Esa Ranganathan Ayar. And my colleague, Mr. Ajay Kumar Sarma is here to introduce formally our today's speaker. Still, if I'm not saying two, three sentences about Dr. Pathok, then I will have seen on my part because I get in touch with him, particularly on Corona period, that is pandemic days through MPLA, that is Madhya Pradesh Library Association, which association is supposed to be one of the popular, famous, and actual professional association in India, and where actually this Patak and Dr. Prabhat Pandey sir carried out the torchbearer role. And they are very keen to exaggerate, to assemble all the Indian professionals in an umbrella, and to address several lacks, needs, problems, and have a platform to discuss freely and openly. From higher, I can confidently say that this MPLA is an open access approach platform, open access approach platform. Because I do believe that this Dr. Patok and Dr. Pandey, they are not only studying open access approach, they are not only marketing open access approach, but they are by their professional attitude, nurturing their professional uh, attitude through open access by the platform of MPLA. I'm also a member and I'm happy that many a times I received call from MPLA and their development professional proposal and many things. So I'm very happy Dr. Patok with his generous role in developing Isaac Bhopal Library, in developing our professional integrity, in catering our role as librarian throughout India and abroad as a librarian, as a deputy librarian, as an information professional in the days when people are attacking whether librarian or library will be there in the near, near future or not, 
standing in this position, your role is really commendable. Your role is really remarkable. With these few words, let me wrap up my part. And uh, I like to invite my colleague, Mr. Ajay Kumar Sarma, who is one of the friend of Dr. Pathok, and very commonly they are meeting at Bhopal, Aizar Guest House, and many places, as I know. So I request uh, my colleague, Mr. Sarma, to introduce our today's speaker formally. Ajay, please. Thank you, Nimai, sir, for giving me uh, an opportunity to introduce today's speaker. So today's speaker is Dr. Sandeep Kumar Pathak. I feel honored to introduce him in our five in our first day of the five-day national level program. So Dr. Sandeep Pathak is a science graduate and has a PhD in information science from University of Pune. Dr. Pathak is currently working as deputy librarian and in charge Central Library, Indian Institute of Science Education and Research, yes. that is Aizar Bhopal, since May 2013, and instrumental in setting up state of art modern library at Aizar Bhopal. He has rich working experience of 24 years in the library profession. Prior to joining Aizar Bhopal, Dr. Pathak has worked with IIT Mandi, IIT Khadakpur, IUCAA Pune in Flipnet Center Gandhi Nagar and Institute of Plasma Research that is IPR Gandhi Nagar. Dr. Pathak is instrumental in setting up a modernized center library at Aizar Bhopal. He served as mentor librarian for Aizar Behrampur and founding librarian for IIT Mandi. Dr. Pathak has supervised more than 20 projects on library automation and RFID implementation in various academic institutions. Dr. Pathak has also published more than 60 research articles in different journals, national and international conference proceedings, and edited three conference proceedings volumes. He is an editor of four international journals and reviewer of three peer-reviewed journals in the library profession. Dr. Pathak is a recipient of SLA Asian Librarian Award 2014, Taylor and Francis Young Librarian Award 2014, MPLA Innovative Librarian Award 2017, MPLA Academic, Academic Librarian Award 2018, and MPLA Special Jury Award 2019, and most recently, SLA Asia SciTech Librarian Award 2022 has been awarded to Dr. Pathak. Aizar Bhopal Library has also received the Aspiring Young Academic Library Award in 2016. He has also received second best research paper award by AISTNT SIG3 Maryland USA in 2008. He has been invited as speakers at several prestigious forums such as Clarity, that is Web of Science, ACS, RCS, Elsevier, Wiley, Institute of Physics, Cambridge University Press, KEDL. He is a National Library Advisor Board member of five major academic publishers. He is a member of Board of a Study of two state universities also. He is a member of various national and international professional associations, including SLA, ILA, Ice League, PULISA, MPLA, etc., and has been actively contributing in their activity and was also a member of committee set up by Ministry of Education, ESOTS Hindu National Consortium. He has been invited as invited speaker or resource person by various academic institutions within the uh, India and also the abroad. So now I am inviting Dr. Sandeep Pathak to please start his deliberation on the topic, Open Science Communication and Role of Libraries. Sir, Sandeep, sir, please, sir. Yes, uh, thank you so much, uh, Ajayji, for introducing me and for your kind words. So before I start, uh, I would like to congratulate uh, Vishwabharji Central Library team for having this uh, five days program, national level program on research, academic skills development program. And uh, we all know, you know, to plan such program, five day program, there are a lot of efforts are needed so uh, it is also you know expected from the participants <laughs> from the fellow librarians and uh, uh, the uh, 
uh, fellow research scholars and library science students to you know learn something new and you know get back and uh, you know try to implement those things in your professional career also in the library uh, so i just like to confirm just a second is my ppt uh, visible yes yes that's yeah, complete and you are audible thank you so much so thank you so much uh, uh, dr uh, saha sir for you know having this uh, uh, talk today and giving me an opportunity to share my view yuka pune uh, inter university center for astronomy astrophysics and we all know those who are especially in the physics and mathematics they know there is a one database called nasa ids so i think many of us we know archive.org right we have prepared the one of the oldest prepared server archive.org so if you uh, being a librarian you should know the you know these are the like treasure of you know open science see open science uh, mean doesn't mean that it's related to the only science only it is a concept but it it covers all the literature in all the subject right we call economic science humanities social science library science and of course all basic science so when i say here about open science means it is a literature academic literature you know made available on the public platform by the legal means right it's not like a, we are talking about predatory and all those things so when it comes to our mind open science you know there are many buzzing words open science open science communication scholarly communication then apc <clears throat> we'll talk about apc also because like acs is telling Yeah, American Chemical Society. All their journals will become open access, but same time they will, you know, introduce APC where author needs to pay APC charges. And then I'll also discuss about the role of the librarian, how we can help our faculty members and scholars to get view of those APC. That also I am going to talk about. And if you have any questions, please keep your questions ready. I'll be happy to answer. Then when we, then embargo, it is also a buzzing word. We should know. being a librarian what is embargo being a scholar being a faculty we should know what is a uh, embargo period then there is also term like of uh, one nation one subscription iso sindhu many other consortium like csr libraries they have having their own consortium plan s i'll talk about, talk, talk about plan s also uh, then and so as i say you know open science here it covers you know all the subjects which i will be talking about so uh, Uh, this is a beautiful campus of vishwabharti though i have not visited i thought you know let me share because we should know who is hosting and we should know about their you know the campus and its attachment with the ravinna tagore uh, so that i think and then of course when you know I, it is uh, we always see the website of the you know institute so this is the like website of vishwabharti and it shows they are doing a lot of efforts with the library services so coming to the my point uh, Uh, as we know uh, you know this like still there is a lot of literature it is you know behind the paywall but we always you know being a librarian we cannot say no uh, to our user the moment uh, any user whether it is a faculty member research scholar uh, or post doctor fellowship or our staff member ask for any article ask for any information we have to say if it is subscribed we can immediately if it is not we have to say yes and then we should borrow some time and then we can provide but same time if we know the resources right then only it will makes our librarians life easier to provide that particular article so we know like during covid period i think we should thank all the academic publishers they have made you know their content accessible to all the libraries without charging anything and i think uh, uh, during covid period i remember uh, at least for two years uh, most of their content were accessible without any fee to the uh, all our users so uh, when you know we started uh, talking about plan s so i think we everybody knows what is plan s so plan s you know it is a initiative for open access publishing it was launched in september 2018 so uh, this plan is supported by collation s so what was there in this plan actually the wherever you know the public money is involved that research article has to be you know available on the uh, uh, easily accessible to everyone it should be available for all but what happened uh, uh, you know this somehow this could not get succeed 
but what publisher have now started uh, doing after this uh, plan s uh, you know they started coming with the open access uh, journals so if you see uh, almost all the good academic publishers and now they are having at least 5 to 10% of their journals on the open access platform okay i'll discuss in detail but same time for example if i talk about indian academy of science right they are having a highly peer reviewed journals and they all are open access out of india their marketing is done by the stranger nature so uh, these are the things uh, so what happened you know when this plan has started so somehow publishers you know uh, we are not very supportive on this movement but what they do uh, they started you know uh, coming out with the preprint movement they started supporting the preprint movement you see the for example of chem archive right those who are from chemistry here they must be knowing chem archive was you know started and this was supported by acs rsc goldsmith like many institutions so being a librarian we should know what is preprint movement what is preprint servers and now i think you must be knowing uh, when you submit an article, you know, on any platform, uh, any preprint server, author get a DOI number also. So what is the advantage of DOI? You have, you know, legal rights. So like the moment you put your research on the public domain, though it is not published with any other journal, you have a legal right with that particular research. So I think I talked about this plan. Is, so uh, now there was, you know, open science policy, as I say, open science movement is, you know, very popular. All the publishers are coming with the open access journals concept. And we know like publisher like PLOS, all their you know, journals are accessible. So before going in the deep, uh, let me first talk about what is scholarly communication, right? So whatever we communicate, we means the academician, we means the author, the research scholar, the faculty members, right? So whatever you communicate uh, through journals, through books, through magazines, that process is called a scholarly communication. What is we are making available to the society? So there are two ways. Was it the traditional and another one is the open access model. So these are the two models of scholarly communication. One is the traditional one. We know like the moment we you know, need to submit the article manuscript to the publisher. They will take some time. And once, you know, it gets published, you know, we used to get preprint copies of, you know, few of the our uh, published manuscript now when we talk about open access model only there is a one difference like open access model open access journal also there are two categories uh, like if you take the example of doaj director of open access journals there are more than now uh, 17000 journals are available so around 12000 journals uh, they are not asking for apc but rest of the 5000 journals they are asking for APC. So here what happens once the moment, uh, uh, author pays the APC, you know, the article uh, becomes, you know, gold open access. For gold open access, he has to pay the APC and then, uh, you know, article will become accessible to everyone. So this is the like two-way model. One is like scientists submit a manuscript to the journals, goes to the editor, peer reviewed, get published. Another model where it will go first, he will submit to the, as you can see here, Parallelly, he will submit a manuscript to preprint servers and then journals. So, see, if you submit a manuscript to the journal, you know, few publishers, they are very prompt. They will publish your manuscript in three weeks to, uh, you know, uh, six week time. But there are few publishers, you know, they take, like if you talk about RSC, ACS, they quickly publish IEEE, they publish your manuscript in, in a like one month time. But you talk about elsewhere, widely, they take more time to publish. So this is why if you are using a preprint server. So this is the academic publishing, right? The process and then how academic publishing works. So like production, distribution, consumption, open access, you know, term. This term has come in the Budapest conference in 2002, which says the free availability of public internet permitting any user to read, download, copy, distribute, print, search, or link of full text journals, right? And for any lawful, for any lawful purpose without any financial barrier. And most importantly, it is legally made available on the platform. So there is no issue, you know, when you take up this. So I think now we, everybody knows about, you know, what is open access, it is accessible to everyone. Because in library science also, when we talk about LMS, we know there are various, various 
uh, you know, LMS we call OSS, right? Open source software. So here we are talking about open access. So open access, you know, it's an alternative for academic publishing. Now, what is happening here when you talk about, you know, people sometimes, you know, mistakenly, you know, this the without the cost of produce. But we know always, you know, cost is involved and doesn't mean that, you know. So you need to remember one thing uh, that, you know, few of the publishers, they have started exploiting this model, open access model. How they started exploiting? We know uh, predatory journals, right? Predatory journals are, you know, they also come up with the clone journals. If you go to UGC care list, uh, they have given few examples also, you know, about uh, this uh, uh, clone journals. Like there is a cell, cell journal, they will say the cell, right? So being a librarian, we need to learn all those things and we need to tell our scholars, they should be cautious about this. Uh, predatory journals because you know few of the especially they target the new body scholars so you need to be very careful we need to tell them because they send an email you publish your articles on our platform and we'll publish in a two weeks time and you need to pay, pay some you know some amount and so what is the thing uh, you know a new research scholars if they are not aware they will end up by you know publishing their very good article on predatory you know pub, uh, platform which is not going to be count, you know, at later stage uh, for their APAR or any other thing. So there we need to create awareness being a librarian in the campus. So are open access articles purely review? Yes, definitely. Is it free to produce an open access articles? It depends on the nature of the journals. <clears throat> Uh, they, so, uh, you know, open access, uh, when we talk about, so there is a you know, lot of room for imagination. Some publishing house, only publish open access journals and some publish a mix of open access journals and subscription journals, right? So I'll talk about those. For example, you know, like Frontiers. Frontiers are developed, you know, so they are, you know, uh, journals are open access platform and here author has to pay the publishing charges. So these are the like, you know, if you go to their state of art publishing platform, efficient and rigorous peer review. So this I'm talking about the open access, you know, journals, the parameters, extensive reviewers, so one should not think it is open access. So whatever you want, you can publish. Even I would say they are, you know, more rigorous about this process. And one more thing, uh, we need to tell our scholars, you know, once it is open access, many people will read. And in case of any issue, you know, that is screenshot or that issue will be wider. So we need to be very particular about, you know, what we are going to publish. Because this is going to be reviewed, you know, by many academicians. We know there are many matrices like alt matrix. So it very much depends on you know how much time your research is being discussed, retweeted, or uh, you know uh, uploaded or shared with the another people uh, in any social media platform. So why open access matters? I think we everybody knows you faculty members. You know they are willing to publish their article on open access platform. What is the advantage? It attracts you know more citation to their manuscript. And once you attract more citation, what is the advantage to the author? Their H index will go high, right? But same time, you know, we tell our you know, faculty members like they should have also have their you know visibility uh, of their profile, research profile on various other platform. Like they should have Archit ID, they should have Google Scholar, you know, ID, Kudos, Impact Stories, right? And then fix air. Then institute also can think of having a ring gold ID. I'll talk about those things. Then uh, share your research with the world. This is also very necessary, you know, visibility of our research. See, let me tell you what is the trend now, uh, especially, you know, with the foreign authors, uh, you know, they, after once their article get published, they put lot of efforts on, you know, publicizing their research. Hum log hai, what, what we do actually in our context, once we are, our article is published, we start working on another manuscript you know, another article. But they spend a lot of time, you know, for post-publication work, lot of marketing, lot of visibility. Like even, you know, they create dedicated LinkedIn ID for their article, you know, to attract more citation. Because if there is a more visibility, it will attract more citation. It will attract more collaborator for research, right? For example, if you see the IR, INS, or, uh, you know, Scopus or Web of Science or Dimension.ai or Wisdom.ai, you can see the Vidwan database. 
you can see the researcher with whom you know they are working ndli so this is how you get to know who with whom you can collaborate and this is very useful for the research scholar uh, you know they can decide during phd with whom you know they can do the post doctoral fellowship and then uh, after doing post doctoral fellowship when they join the faculty position you know they have a wider network so like i am working in crystallology uh, am i audible uh, ajay ji Yes, yes, sir. Yes. yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. So, suppose say like I am working in crystallology. So, uh, I'll be knowing you know these are the set of people like four hundred people they are working worldwide you know on crystallology. So, what is the advantage? I will have those close groups. I have seen here in like in chemistry every Saturday they have a, like you know all the chemists all the means I'll say most of the chemists they are meeting every Saturday nine pm to eleven pm, and they you know. Rent, like rotation basis they are you know sharing their research with all of them so i see all the research scholar everybody they join and they listen to their so this is you know i like very much this is i think uh, we also take to initiate in our you know library science fraternity where you know the librarians can come and discuss you know at least there can be a regular activity like uh, this is a five days but every saturday and they start in the 9 pm in saturday so like when you are done with the dinner you know you join that discussion so this is the advantage sharing your research with the world then get noticed so once it is open access you know once it is become a part of open science your research get noticed so once your research get noticed you know and then all other advantage you know you are visible in the research community people will invite you for a talk and all those things you know they start and then collaboration is also very important and once you get more collaborator you are likely to get more funding you know and then you know setting up more advanced lab and this is how you know and then it also inform the future which direction you know like if you go to the web of science scopus c you can make out you know which topic you know is a buzzing one you can easily make out ki where is the trend is going so these are the various open access models like gold open access green open access hybrid open access bronze open access and platinum open access so being a librarian we should know what are these open access model and then only we can tell our scholars you know how to make a use of this open access model right so now let me talk about the open science right so we know open science actually is a movement as i says it is nothing to only do with the you know subject in the science subject it is a covered all the literature in the all the subjects it is a movement to make scientific research accessible to each and every person every part of the society because we know our science is transparent in india to talk about there is a like indian academy of science right indian national science academy and there are various institutions like tfr iuk rri ncl all csr bodies they are playing a very important role in open science and this government is also very much focusing you know that whatever uh, you know is doing from the may making your you know uh, research by using the government funding they should try to publish in such a open access platform and i heard it and it this might happen <laughs> that in india most this major academic institutions whether they are like csr labs or iits or nits or icers uh, they may be asked to come up with a one journal they need to start with the journal and then faculty members from india or researchers may be asked to publish their article at least once in a year or two articles in these journals like we know china you know they are very much fond of publishing their article in their chinese journal so this that time has come to have our own you know bunch of very good journal this journal and they will be the part of this open science <coughs> uh, this publications <clears throat> so this is the broader picture you know of open science where we talk about open data open access publishing and all those things so open science is an umbrella and uh, umbrella term and describe the process of making the content and process of producing evidence and claims transparent and accessible to others so when we talk about uh, open science communication i think we should also you know uh, thank the publishing uh, you know body because they are all they are the one actually who are carrying this mandate because they have the infrastructure you know and they have already started publishing many open science journal so because we know we are supplement to each other the librarian fraternity libraries and the academic publishers right 
so we are the one who tell them how they should move forward and they are the one who execute uh, right with their resources so what are the challenges in existing system of scientific communication when i talk about we can say performance evaluation of scientific work this is the challenge speed in our communication process as i say few of the publishers they take little time but few of the publishers you know they take more time then respect for freedom of science, science and research this is very much required you know especially for our faculty members you know when they need money to set up a lab you know government should support and you know uh, all those things then efficiency is also very important dissemination digitization possibility of very uh, you know verifiability of knowledge and then prevention of misuse and scientific conduct so i always say you know like our faculty members there was they are very much busy in their research in their administrative work and their teaching so this is the time for the you know research scholar this is the duty of the research scholars and the librarians to learn about more you know uh, this academic support tools research support tools you know where they can save the time where they can you know produce the quality research so when i talk about open science it also you know includes the uh, you know tools where they can you know make they are this open science more quality like if you talk about reference management you, then it comes to mendeley jotero you know where you can make your all the references in a order then opportunities so this type out about challenges and then opportunities and challenges for the scientific community so open science communication and digital change will you know definitely will have the consequences for disseminating producing and storing science specific information and this situation can be unique opportunity for the scientific communication and taking forward to the layman so uh, as i says you know when we talk about open science communication the publisher you know have to play a very important role and there are few publishers you know they are playing very important role like plos i talked about then frontiers frontiers you know all their journals are open access journals plos there are also all journals are open you know access journals Indian Academy of Science. You see their journals: Overview, Bulletin of Material Science, Journal of Astrophysics, Journal of Genetics, Sathana, Current Science. All their journals are open access. But let us ask ourselves: Being a librarian, have we, have we, have we, have have we communicated this to our scholar community? Whether these journals are accessible and they should make a use of this. Number one. Number two: Have we made these you know journals listed on our library website? so these things are very necessary at our end you know to make the visibility of this resources to the we can you know have a print of these we can put on our notice board especially when you know new students are joining during with their orientation program when we have a you know close interaction uh, resources uh, available with them you know what are the open science platform where you know open science means it is a term but we can talk about open access journals and you know how they can be accessible for them how they will be useful for their literature search for deciding their you know uh, the phd problem right so now i will talk about give you examples you know like wiley they have a 150 peer reviewed open access journal 150 so i think we need to you know make all those listing on our library website give a link what are those 150 journals you know and how we can so these are the list like one you can go and check what are the and then tell over you elsewhere this elsewhere journal also they have a many open access journals they also come with the open access mirror journals right then springer nature they also have a, you know uh, many open access like if you see here they have a like hybrid open access 2200 hybrid open access journal hybrid means there will be a few open access few uh, you know Based credential based, and then they have thirteen hundred open access ebooks. So thirteen hundred is a big number. If we list all those on our library website, our fraternity will be very happy. When you talk about IOP in Institute of Physics, you know this is also a very you know they also have many open access journals. Oxford University Press, they also have a you know number of open access journals. Cambridge Core, they have a fifty nine. Open access journals, right? So this total fifty nine journals having a more than forty six thousand open access research articles. When you talk about Imrad, I think we all know, you know, library science professionals, right? What is Imrad publisher? 
so emerald platform you will get many you know open access uh, you know many journals in library science right so uh, they also have this green open access you know and self archiving process so i think we everybody knows what is green open access you know how we can uh, make a use of this uh, am i audible yes sir yes yes you are audible okay so uh, yeah so i, I think uh, uh, I'm I'm giving presentation uh, from uh, yeah, like this cup. I thought it was on UPS, so probably I was thinking to switch on laptop, but yeah, not, not, not. Uh, so uh, when we talk about uh, this publishing and open access book, I think uh, you all we all again can think of this. Uh, if you are planning to write a book, Imran provide a platform where you can publish our book as a open access. Okay. So then when it comes to the IEEE, we know IEEE is a very you know, famous uh, publisher, especially for electrical engineering, uh, you know, people. So it also provides open access, you know, to few of their journals. So why I'm telling, I think, you, I hope you got it, right? You, you know, there are more than 5,000 academic publishers and it is our duty, you know, to uh, identify those open access journals and list them on the uh, library website. This is all about NPG. Now we know this has been taken over by Springer. Royal Society, they also have a few open access journals. Royal Society of Chemistry, they are also came up with the open access uh, journals, research, and as I said, they are also supporting the preprint server like Chem Archive, ACS. They, I think, uh, I heard that now they are making their all journals, you know, open access. We know ACS is one of the most expensive uh, like in our case, we are paying around, I think, $68,000 to have all ACS, you know, journals. But see, the same time, once you make open access, there are two kinds of few open access journals, author need not pay APC. Other set of open access journals, their author need to pay the APC. IOP, I think we already talked about. Then self-press, self-press, I think everybody knows that uh, if you have, and if you want to have annual subscription, you need to pay around $18,000. But if you can wait for six months, you know, most of their content become open access after six months. So there is a embargo created for six months. But uh, we know if you talk to researcher, uh, they will say six months, you know, is a big, big time, big period. Uh, uh, so uh, that is, you know, being a librarian, we should know what are, you know, their uh, embargo period and all those things. I think we all know DOAJ, right? Directory of Open Access Journals. This is a tool. Uh, I think uh, we should tell uh, our scholars this will be very useful for their uh, research, especially literature search. As you can see here, total 17,000 journals. This screenshot may be slightly older. Uh, 17,000 uh, journals. If you see out of 17,000, 12,000 are without APC. So it's not necessary all the time, you know, uh, faculty has to pay APC. So there are out of 17,000, 12,000 journals there without APC, okay? If you talk about, uh, you know, like any institute publication, like when I search about ISAR Bhopal, 2,300 publications. So out of 23, you see our 944, you know, articles are open access. So what we did actually here, we have a, you know, uh, two repository. We have a one institution repository, and then we have embargo free publication. So all these 944 articles we have downloaded and uploaded in the separate repository. And then disseminated that, you know, uh, this uh, uh, domain IP on various social media. So what is the advantage? You know, this also attract the, you know, researcher from other institute to go and see. So, you know, it attract more citation for our authors. So this is one of the initiate we have taken over here. So you can see the trend of open access in our platform. One more thing, I think being a librarian, you know, we should know the track, uh, you know, how much our faculty members are paying APC for various publishers platform. We should get that data. We should also know how much money, money is being spent. And then here librarian can play an important role to save these APC charges, especially the if you write an email to the society publishers, they are very kind to, you know, accept our request, especially society publishers, they give a lot of attention to an email from the librarian side. So if you save the public money, institute money, you know, our institute will be very happy. 
and this is you know we can have our more more visibility in the eyes of the our institute administration so we need to see how we can play the important role over here so this is like i said we have embargo free you know repository for embargo free publications and then uh, preprint servers so there are various preprint servers subject wise like archive.org you know cr and document uh, server then cop print subject wise you know there are many e print servers in chemistry physics all the subject there is a practical guide also to you know preprint how this whole is moving and then x the tutor is the old name also we need to see how many you know like bhopal also we are planning to you know activate the bhopal knowledge cluster like i am very much impressed with the pune pune knowledge cluster how they are you know making you know this uh, word buzzing around so this is the role of the librarian here also librarians are involved so and then when you talk about open science on x or twitter then you will see lot of you know movements are going on in open data science open science mooc movement we know dan peter how you know we can make it so this is a complete flow then uh, of course uh, you know ndli i think we know uh, ndli we need to tell you know our researchers is playing an important role you know dissemination of open science and this uh, literature is available on the languages including bangla gujarati hindi marathi so like this recently you know i was searching for an uh, so i got an this mundel khan ka sanchit itihas and then contact details and then ndl is also come with the ndl club so those who are hearing me you can think of you know setting up ndl club and they, you can contact dr anirban mukherjee his mobile number so i think they will be very happy to have set up ndl club in your institution when you talk about open science we should thank the body like ncert we know all their books are accessible on open access platform they also have mobile app you go to the google play store you can download you know their uh, app and see this logo because there are many other platforms so you once you make sure this logo is there you can download the legal version of ncert books then there is a one more tool like uh, you know internet archive this is also a very important tool playing an important role you know in the open science communication doa i already talked about this doa we also there are many you know open access books 70000 more than 70000 academic peer reviewed books this is also very important you know then there is a core this is also a tool <clears throat> see i am talking about all these tools are very important for librarian to disseminate open science right to tell our users these are the resources available and they should not make a complaint this journal we are not subscribing that journal because there are lot of literature already available and we also know like like in our case like we have a budget of almost 7 crore rupees for a library and 90% of this budget we are spending on subscribing electronic resources right and we should thank government that you know they are giving this much budget but suppose there is a drop in the budget amount that a case also we should be ready with all those tools so there the role of the librarians comes how much you know and and one more thing i would suggest whatever articles you are providing to your faculty members you keep a data keep a track of those so whenever there is a meeting library committee meeting or this thing you tell ki these are the articles we have provided to faculty members scholars and you tell also the price like would you be no it vary price but you know sometimes it vary from 30 dollar to 35 dollars so suppose you are given the 800 article so you multiply it by 35 dollar and then you can say the 30 this much money you know we have saved you know by using the our librarians network so this is how you know because we all know librarians are doing lot of efforts taking lot of efforts but there is a less visibility so have a more visibility i think we should come up you know with such statistics in the knowledge of the higher authority so core then coming to million book project this is also a you know project where we will get lot of you know information and you can tell scholar this will help them to find a research problem for their research number 1 number 2 uh, you know to you know have the better literature search then there is a, another one project gutenberg library genesis i think we know pdf drive open textbook library is also very useful here you will get like just like ncert here you get indian textbook for school going children here open textbooks you will get for the college uh, going student and these are the all 
this is open textbook is a legal you know site made available supported by one of the university here you will get a lot of you know textbooks here and, and Peter, i think we already know we should appreciate this movement by government of india all the old IITs and IIC Bangalore, you know, they are the work behind this movement. So the repository, so Ganga, I think everybody knows, right? So this is also a very useful database. Then, the, you know, we when we talk about citation database, so uh, we know Scopus, Web of Science, but many of us, you know, we are not able to subscribe. Like we, in case of Web of Science, you know, it is being provided to us by ESO Sindhu. When we talk about Scopus, the cost is 28 lakh rupees. And, uh, you know, most of the institution cannot pay for, you know, this kind of databases. So there are few sites which provide you the data. Of course, there is an error margin of 10 to 15 percent, but at least you get some data. So, for example, wisdom.ai, if you go, for example, you see ISA Bhopal, ISA more or less, you know, they are saying, they are showing the correct data over here. So if you see, they are showing the year-wise publications, then who, with whom they are working, country-wise their collaboration top journals, top cited journals, top cited publishers, all those data, you know, ready-made data they are giving. There's a one more site, dimension.ai. This is also a very useful site. You can, you know, see the publications, uh, you know, of course, you need to write an email to them and then, you know. So, these are the other, you know, ARCID, we know this is like academic other ID. All the scholars should have ARCID ID. It doesn't matter whether they have a paper or not. All the librarians, I feel they should have ARCID ID. You know, uh, so they should know how what is the role of ARCID ID, how it is helping in data mining. You know, if you go to Scopus, you can search the author publication by giving ARCID ID. If you go to Web of Science by giving ARCID ID, you can search the. So, what is the advantage of ARCID ID? All your publications you can bring under one umbrella. Especially, it is useful for female type scientists. You know, once their name get changed, but all their publications, if they add under one this ARCID ID, they will be visible to the under his or name. Research ID also, you know, one should have the research ID, we should tell our scholars. Google Scholar ID, definitely yes. One should have a, like this example of Professor Govardhan Das. You know, so when you have a Google Scholar ID, you can follow someone, you can search someone, and you know, you can also set an alert for their, you know, each publications, all those things. So here, I think I already talked about this. I'm now the last part of my presentation. So, uh, this is the APC. As I said, librarians can play a very important role on waving of APC. And those who want to have a more detail, they can talk to me separately, write an email. I'll tell you about, you know, how we can uh, write, how we should write an email to the publisher to get wave off. If you wave off of APC, faculty member, I know in my campus, he tells the 10 other faculty members, you know, that Pataji saved my APC. So whenever they, they, the person writing a paper, they write an email, he has published and asked me to pay. Can you help me to wave up pay APC? So uh, let me tell you, this is very, you know, success ratio very high when, you know, the publisher is any society publisher. But when it comes to any commercial publisher, like, you know, there are many commercial publishers, dealing with them is you know, a bit difficult. And if you give your 100% dealing with this commercial publisher, I'm sure they will give at least, you know, 30 to 40 to 50% discount, uh, you know, by, but we need to put efforts, communication uh, through your official ID to these publishers. Okay. So now coming to the last slide of my presentation that, you know, open science, I think now we know everybody about open science and then, you know, plan S. And then we also, you know, one nation, one subscription is coming up where government is planning to, you know, provide uh, academic literature to, uh, you know, all the citizens of this country, you know, by end of the day, by, you know, the, when all phases are completed. So, but by that time, whatever, you know, the open science, you know, tools are available, open science publishers are there, publishers which are publishing open access, you know, journals. It is our duty to, you know, arrange, organize, you know, such uh, orientation and I think uh, this is also an effort, uh, you know, by Dr. Shaha, by Vishwabharati Central Library to, you know, uh, have this movement, to have this talk about open science. And this is how, you know, this vibration, this, uh, you know, uh, uh, kick uh, about, you know, the awareness about this open science goes away to the faculty members, you know, and let them tell that, you know, these are the things are available. And every year we have a new scholar, every year we have a new students. So we should have orientation on a regular basis. We should tell them and we should tell them about this concept. 
then about open access, you know, resource of post tools, how to make a use of those. And not only open science, we also, you know, need to tell them about other databases, like when if you're having any grammar soft grammar, you know, so tool, you should tell about that grammar tool, then you know, various other tools, how to make the use, like Scopus, Web of Science, SciFinder, many other tools. So being a librarian, we need to, you know, learn all whatever we are subscribing. In case we are subscribing, we should know the detailing and then you know turn all anti plagiarism softwares like Orkon, Turnitin, and we need to tell our you know uh, students how to make a use of this. So awareness is very very important. So uh, last slide of my presentation, I need to advise on preserving research output, data management, then support researchers, data manipulation tools, data mining, metadata. You know these are the tools we need to tell, and then e resource management. Uh, for you know especially for librarians uh, and then making them available uh, on the library website so uh, i acknowledge you know whatever resources i taken uh, from the website from the various academic websites these are the few references i mentioned over here and these are the few photographs of uh, our isrb campus uh, this was the summer summer this is the monsoon our few campus photographs uh, so with these words, I thank you, uh, sincerely thank uh, uh, my uh, fellow colleague, uh, Dr. Shaha, for giving me this opportunity and uh, Sri Ajay ji. And I once again thank you for having this, you know, vibrancy of topics in this five days program. Thank you so much, sir. And now we can have a question answer session. Yeah, over to yeah. you. Thank you so much for your vibrant presentation. Basically, as I find that it is yield of your day to day's experience rather because throughout your presentation literature was so least but which you have practiced in your day to day life basically you were just going to figuring before us now presentation is open may i request our online participants to raise your hands if you want to reach us by voice we will go by one by one or you may post your questions or observation through chat box. We will take care about that. In the meantime, uh, if anybody intend to say, yes, just know, see, somebody is raising hands. Yes, me. Hello, sir. Yes, please, welcome. Uh, good noon. To all dignitaries and uh, Patrick, especially for your good. Uh, it is better to uh, introduce yourself. Yourself. yes. Yes, yes. Uh, hello, sir. Yeah, can you introduce, introduce yourself? Uh, uh, my, 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 myself, Sumi Chakraborty. I am working at Mineral Exploration Consultancy Limited, Nagpur, and yeah. pursuing PhD from Rastasan Tukruji Maharaj Nagpur University. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, Sumit. Uh, uh, so uh, my question is that uh, uh, regarding the predatory publications. So yes. whenever I accumulate the journals, you know, various websites, you know, open source. So there are a lot of uh, uh, lot of lacks uh, in their, their editorial boards and their uh, publications, and they are showing they are uh, saying that it will be published within uh, 30 days or the 15 days in their websites in open access, and it will be. And later, I have seen it that it is indexed in Google Scholars also, and so many uh, uh, indexing system. So, how can I pre uh, pre predefine or how can I detect the journals that these are the predatory publication? Okay. I will not accept. Yeah, it. Yeah. I got your question. Could it's you a very good question. Hey, even you, even you know, you will be surprised. Like, uh, if you know, Dr. Saha say one day, like you know, he is one of the peer reviewer of any journal, and he is part of it. Because you know what they do, these printed publishers, they are very clever. They will take the top field from this profession, they'll put their name and they will say, you know, it is indexed by UGC care list. And you know, so being a scholar, being a librarian, or being an author, it is our duty to go and check. They may say it is indexed by you know by scopus or web of science, they may say anything, but it is our duty to go and check. So what I say here is the bottom line, I'll not go about the you know uh, uh, like thing check submit other the site i'll say just one line you go to the ugc care list give the journal name and just see whether it is there or not if it is there you take a screenshot for your record because that is also being reviewed and you keep in record and if the journal is there you go ahead and publish 
If that journal is not there in the UGC care list, then you should not publish. So we should thank the government for you know providing such platform where you know easily one can go and, and check. Uh, so we know UGC care list. You know there is a two kind of categorization. In categorization number one, uh, you know all the journal indexed by Scopus and Web of Science they are you know listed. And categorization number two, remaining journals they are as per the UGC care list guidelines because Subhada is there. She is a good friend of mine. So, you know, and it is, you know, coordinated by Pune University only. So, second part, as per their protocol, suppose, for example, Vishwabharati is also coming, you know, with a journal, publishing a journal, and they want to be a part of this uh, UGC care list, they need to fill in, you know, form, and, with the, and they can submit their journal for this thing, they will review it, and then if it is in order, it can also be become a part of the UGC care list. And one more thing you are telling that it is indexed by Google Scholar. See, Google Scholar is an open access platform. So you cannot rely on this the Google Scholar. You need to go see the authentic source. One authentic source, I will say in Indian platform, that is a UGC care list. You please go and check whether it is there. Would you like to add anything, Sahasar, here? Yeah, perfect. 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 I think Sumit is uh, satisfied on your uh, yes. response. Okay. Yes, so, may I have request, uh, yeah, Monoj Kumar Sa, you just unmute yourself, introduce yourself, then put up your opinion. Monoj Kumar Sa, you raise your thank, hands. Thank you, thank you, thank you, sir. Uh, good afternoon to all of you and congratulate uh, uh, Vishwabharati University and Patak, <coughs> sir. I am Mr. Monoj Kumar Sa, working as a library assistant in Indian Maritime University Kolkata campus. Sir, my question is, it, it is uh, uh, always recommended that uh, we can uh, uh, submit our manuscript uh, in uh, to the journal as well as preprint uh, uh, simultaneously. Uh, and, and, and I have uh, another uh, one question also. Uh, so com uh, coming to the open access uh, the moment, uh, as you have mentioned many sources, uh, about the um, uh, op open sources and that to very uh, quality journals and quality content are, are there and uh, still we are spending our scores of rupees for subscribing electronics resources so uh, i i need to uh, get remarks from you sir thank you yeah, sir. Manu, uh, sorry actually i was on one urgent call so uh, can you repeat what i understand from your first part of question i i could have yeah, yes, sir. Asking, uh, ki we should submit an our manuscript to both preprint server as well as the uh, journal, right? Right, sir. Yeah. So see, I, I will tell you, you know, like in I see my I see my campus physics people, you know, they are very confident. They have no fear, you know, when they publish their manuscript to preprint server. But when I see to the biology and other people, you know, still they are hesitant. Though preprints, you know, server they are providing DOI to the authors. And once you get UI means, uh, you know, uh, you have a, you know, uh, thing you can, uh, you know, mention and publisher also allow officially, legally that you can submit to any preprint servers. But what I see here, the trend, you know, even they say, Ki Pataji, you know, it's fine. We are getting DOI or all those things, but people are taking the concept from there, our paper. And, you know, and especially those who are working in the same area, but not coming to the conclusion. So that case, you know, they get a clue from there and they submit to the, and it has happened few times that both the manuscript are parallelly being published. Or sometimes the person who took the, you know, the idea, their manuscript got published before the actual one. So this kind of fears are there in the author. But I, I as a librarian or as a physicist, because I am also a person in physics, I always strongly recommend that it is better to have it publish our manuscript also in preprint server. See, what is the advantage? See, your research, once you publish on any journal or publisher platform, it will take few months, like six, four weeks to six weeks to eight weeks. So by that time, your research will not be visible. But the day you put, submit your manuscript to any preprint server, it is visible to everyone. And the day it is visible to everyone, people will know where you are working and one more advantage. Once you submit your manuscript on preprint server, you will start getting the feedback. And based on the feedback, you can, you know, modify your actual research work. And then you can finally submit the manuscript on the uh, 
publisher platform. So it is it, it is you know it is a purely volunteer on the authors. Like Dr. Sanger want to publish his man, his manuscript to a particular journal, but it is, it is up to him whether he uh, whether he want to also publish on the preprint server. So it is the author choice. But we always you know recommend being a librarian that you should try to you should uh, parallelly you can also have you know your manuscript published on any of the preprint server because it is supported by the publisher and you also get a DUI number. Yes. Well said. Uh, is there anybody, is there anybody, if you intend to take a part in the interaction, then please raise your hands. We are here to make you open. A chat box, is there anything on chat box? Please provide the PPT if possible for the participant. Yeah, so this sir, one uh, yes. participant requested that please provide the PPT. Yeah, he has also given thumbs up, so there is no need to go for that. Once he's uh, share it to us, we will send you through mail. You can contact directly with Sandeep sir, or you can contact with us. We will take a mutual uh, cooperation. Okay. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, Sandeep sir, before uh, going to final part. Let me seek your opinion and uh, you know consent that as our practice, soon after the lecture session is over, we usually make it open throughout the globe through our YouTube channel. So this video lecture session will be uploaded in our YouTube channel. I think you will allow us to do it sure, because sir. okay, okay. So so uh, what why we are doing it because we believe that since it is academic hour is on in every institute, so many. Uh, well, we are those who intend to listen, eat, or view it, they may not be able by their academic conjecture. So to make it open and to make it live, this vibrant talk, we usually make upload in our YouTube channel so that it will be made available throughout the global, global level academics and library colleagues to make more and more economy efficient use of the online and subscribe resources and to excel the quality of the research output, which actually basic regions of librarians are doing work. So that's excellent why we idea. are... Excellent yeah. idea because you know, it's a working day. Many of the librarians maybe could not join due to their working. So later yes. on, they, they can also... Sir, please also share the link with me. So yeah, no. for my mm -hmm. card. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, and uh, no, no, he is asking the common link. Uh, yeah, the, the right now, we will share our YouTube channel link in the chat box. You can take a note and there are more than 170 uh, talks are there. And soon after uploading uh, Dr. Pathok sir's uh, lecture, the separate link will be given in the next day or through WhatsApp or mail, whoever required. So <clears throat> now this is the, the last part since it is a peak time of our working uh, area. So without uh, going to late anything, and as there is no much hands raised by the participants, because <coughs> actually Sandeep sir, didn't left anything for question because whatever he has presented, it's a complete presentation. That's why I think there is no more question and people will listen it after the uh, the session is uploaded. Now, before to wrapping it up, it's a matter of courtesy to offer formal word of thanks. And in this regard, may I request my colleague, Dr. Kausik Ghos, who is supposed to be the in charge of my journal section as well as circulation section of Central Library to offer formal word of thanks. Dr. Ghosh, please. Thank you, Dr. Nimaj and Saha. Uh, so it feel honored and privileged to win opportunity to propose a word of thanks on this five day national level academic skill development program between the 21st and 25th August, 2023. As you know, today is the day one and we are organizing such kinds of special sessions throughout the year. First, on behalf of Vishwabharati, Vishwabharati Library Network and Central Library, let me extend our gratitude and sincere thanks to our Honorable Vice Chancellor, Sir, Professor Vidhu Chakraborty, Sir. Organizing such sessions throughout the year was only possible with his support. The program was only organized with the leadership of our respected university librarian, Dr. Nima Chansaha, I also convey my heart congratulations to you. Most importantly, my unique and hearty thanks to Dr. Sundeep Pathokshar for his consent and such kind of deliberation. 
I thank all the distinguished participants who have joined from different part of the country and abroad to, to attend the session. I sincerely thank to the ICT of the Central Library team for their expertise. And again, I thank everyone directly and indirectly involved of this event whose contribution he has made this session uh, successful. Thank you all again. Thanks for joining. Have a nice day. So before winding up of today's session, let me declare about the tomorrow's event that is uh, under the aegis of to pay homage on the eve of 132nd birth anniversary of Padma Sri Dr. Esa Ranganathan Ayar. Our second day's lecture is a legal discourse on copyright infringement, plagiarism, and paraphrasing, which will be delivered by Professor Subir Kumar Rai, who is supposed to be former registered professor, Department of Law, and director IQAC, Bankura University, Bankura, West Bengal. So you all are invited to join with us virtually and physically to encourage us, to encourage the speakers to have a good participants to listen him. I think that will be another good session. So with this formal invitation, uh, let me say final thank you. Patok sir, I have no words to say you thank you, but this kind of personal cooperation, I will pray from you for next or future of our journey. So thank you very much for your one call acceptance. Thank you very much. Thank you, so much, sir. Thank thank you. you for giving me an opportunity and I congratulate you for having you know uh, this series. Thank you so much. Sir. Okay, great. Please wrap up.